Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 20th. This week is getting close to Halloween and so I wanted to do a show on pseudoscience and as a matter of fact as I was thinking of ideas for the show I was looking through my subs list and I happened to come over a subscriber of mine that I've been sub to for quite a long time ICP Chad and he was talking pretty much along the same type of subject in one of his latest videos so I invited him to come on the show so I'm actually going to do this show as an interview where Chad and I both talk about our ideas on pseudoscience and what it's all about and then immediately following I'm going to have the answer video done by AZ Wacko about what the tool was that he showed on the last TDD report and then also my buddy Bill BC65925 has made a video showing the next tool which should be a little bit easier it's something I was able to actually guess right away these whoever's been doing these tool reports so far has stumped me except for this last one with BC which is a little bit easier I think more people will be able to get and then as usual the following week I will have the answer to the tool that BC shows so here we go with the interview and then the other two videos will follow right after that you, yeah. can, you can still hear me fine oh yeah sounds great okay what I'm on right now everybody this is Chad also known as ICP Chad and I was thinking with Halloween coming up for the TDD report, it would be something a little bit out of the ordinary because I do touch on it from time to time because I'm uh, into science really big and I'm also very much a skeptic. I wanted to do a show on pseudoscience. And while I was thinking about that, at the time I was scrolling through my subs and who happened to come up but Chad coming up with a video titled Psychic Frauds or Delusional Imbeciles. And I'm going to put a link to that video right there, but if you want to clue anybody in on basically what that video was about, too. Uh, pretty much what the title sounds, just asking the question, just asking people to ask themselves the question of what's really going on, because it seems that more and more people are making these great claims, and yet it does seem odd that, as you know, the you know, James Randi Foundation has never, never been able to find anyone that can produce uh, this, this ability, so... I just thought I'd put it out there and uh, basically asking the audience to ask themselves the question because you know how to can't tell people anything. Yeah. Now, when did you first become familiar with James Randi? Because I knew him going back to as a teenager from the Johnny Carson show myself. Oh, okay. See, I just found out about him. I mean, oh. I, as I mentioned in that video, maybe some of those people just don't know that it's available, and that's why I was putting it out because I only learned of James Randi about three months ago. It was the first time I'd ever. Uh, heard his name or knew anything about the challenge or knew anything about the great work he did for the last 30 years, you know, or 40 years, whatever. So I just found out about him recently. And uh, and anyone who's unfamiliar with him, it's, he's a treat to listen to. He's a, he's a person that's got a, a way of explaining things to show you the other side of the matter that a lot of times you don't look. And I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, he's a very honest, very honorable person, too, and uh, that's the thing about it, too. He's always, everything is on the up and up. There's no fraud involved or anything like that, and the funny thing about it is during talk radio era when it was big in the 80s, I used to listen to this one station that would invite psychics on, but it basically was a setup. They would go along for about half an hour of the show acting like they kind of were, you know, giving the psychic a format to uh, promote their thing, which they obviously were, but then all of a sudden someone named Jim would call in, and I would recognize his voice, and what it was, was he was being set up to be confronted. And uh, I remember one night on a talk show, the psychic was so flabbergasted by James Randi's challenge that he started crying on the air, and basically yeah. wouldn't even come back to the show anymore because he was, you know, kind of called out. I mean, that's the one thing that James Randi does. He said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. I agree. I agree. And what you just said there about confronting, and that's not the reason I put that video out is I, I've been publishing books for since 2000. Yeah. I've put out over 70 titles, uh, metaphysical genre, spiritual type books, that kind of thing. And I didn't notice immediately, but over the years, uh, we've drawn a lot of the woo-woo crowd that, that have these great claims, the yeah. same kind of great claims. And it's been my personal experience dealing with them in the background. I get the luxury of Finding out how they really are. I mean, it, a person's one way on stage, they're one way on TV, they're one way on the air. But to, when you get to work with them behind the scenes, then you really get to see the kind of people they are. And after so many years of seeing this, you know, there's a lot of things I'm starting to question myself. 
that's the thing that we are finding somebody like James Randi who did a lot of this work that I just came to find out about. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it needs to be confronted. That was my point, is that I think that it is time to confront this stuff because if we don't, we're being led, we are being led astray by it, even if it's by wishful thinking, because we want to believe, which uh, seems to be the case here. And yeah. Most Plus, as a true scientist, I noticed you didn't dismiss it as a possibility, too, but you have to be weeding out those people that are genuine frauds, and also those people that are not frauds, they really believe there's some right. kind of power they possess, but they just are not able to show it under some kind of scientific scrutiny. You remember the, the you remember the X Files, right? Oh well, I haven't really watched the show, but I actually know of the show. Yeah. Sure. And uh, for ten years or ten seasons, whatever, they were showing you that poster, Mulder's poster, and what did it say? I want to believe. Mm -hmm. It means he didn't believe. There's obviously some doubt there, or some skepticism, because he wants to believe. And in this regard, I'm the same way. I mean, I do want to believe that there's something more going on here. It's a mm -hmm. spiritual reality that is. That's beyond anything we can even measure. As scientists, there may be a, a world or a reality existing here that we can't measure and we can't observe. And so, therefore, science is going to go out the window if that's the case of the matter. But I think mean, it needs to be confronted because, like you said about the Great Plains, if anyone wanted to make that, you should be willing to, uh, to back it up. Yeah. yeah. And I'm kind of an anomaly in the skeptics community, too. I'm not totally accepted somewhat in the skeptics community. I communicated for a while with, uh, do you know who Derek and Swoopy is in the Skepticality broadcast? Okay, it's, no, it's, it's the podcast for the Skeptics uh, magazine, and it's the official one. And the, the two hosts are called Derek and Swoopy, and I communicated with Derek a little bit. And I noticed Christians are not really super welcome or super invited. I mean, they're kind of like tolerated in the skeptics community, but me as a skeptical Christian, I have to confront even within people that claim to be part of my faith, um, sure. foisting fraud on the Christian community too, um, even in the form of things like faith healers. And to me, that brings a danger in the community, especially, you know, people say, oh, well, it's just the way you believe. It's, you know, it's, it's no harm, no foul. Well, yeah, maybe if you're just watching an entertainment TV show, but what if you're going to a faith healer and uh, ignoring doctor's orders or not even going to a doctor in the first place? Danger in your life. Yeah. Right? And it's yeah. like, you know, if you do, if you're somebody that even doesn't believe in God, just logic would tell you that somebody that does believe in God, why would that stop him, you going to a doctor, why would that stop him from doing anything he would want to do if he wanted to do it? Right. So, I agree there. So I, I, I understand your anomaly perspective. Yeah. Um, I have the same kind of perspective in a sense that I seem to be walking that fine line between science and reason and all that versus a, a little bit of healthy skepticism as well, but mainly science and reason, but with the, the intuitive feeling. You know, there's things yeah. that I can't prove myself. There's things I experience myself and if I were hard pressed to be able to, you know, offer proof for those things, or validate them, or even repeat the experience, I'm not sure that I could do it. You know, so yeah. they're, I'm willing to concede that there's more going on here than I know of, uh, yeah. and that's the fascinating draw to me. That's why I study this stuff, or I look into people, because I'm seriously looking for someone who can produce this claim, and it would turn everything we know upside down. Oh, absolutely. I mean, anything. I think any of us that have led life for 20, 30 years have, can look back to experiences in our lives. They're just coincidence after coincidence after coincidence, and pretty soon you just keep adding it up in your mind and saying, it, it just doesn't normally happen this way, and it's so right. strange, but you can't, like you said, you can't test it under scientific principle because you can't go back and reproduce it. But yet yeah. these things are strange. Now, odds would tell you that in a person's lifetime, they obviously would happen several times too. So I have right. to kind of balance that with the fact that, okay, yeah, over somebody that lives half a century, you're going to have things happen in your life just by chance that are just going to seem yeah. way above normal, like flipping a coin a hundred times and have it land heads. I'm right. sure there's somebody in, in this world or maybe even in this country that has had that happen. It, right. it's, it's obviously out of all the possibilities, it will happen sometimes. But it does make you think. It does kind of get you curious about those things. It, I've often wondered if there's a real magic here that is so subtle we can't see it. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the magic that tells the leaves when to turn and how to fall and why and when to rebud. And, and so many seamless things that go on, like the coincidences you mentioned. Yeah. These are things that happen in all of our lives, whether or not it's you know thinking of someone and then that person calling or... Uh, 
um, we see a lot, just an infinite string of these coincidences that mm -hmm. it may be that that's actually one of the foundations of, of sentient life, and that's why we, we only notice it sometimes, and when we notice it, we call it magic, but really it's happening all the time. And so I try to observe things like that, or I'm curious about things like that, that we, I guess, explain or give us a, a greater hint of those underlying threads that it seems like we're missing. Yeah. You know, it seems like we're, um, no matter which direction you go in or which side of the brain you're on, it, we're still missing something. Um, you know, science would be the first, any good scientist would be the first to admit that they don't know. And, and we're trying to discover and you're trying to look and this and that, but we really don't know. Um, and then on the other side of it, you've got people that are more than happy to claim that they do know. Yeah. Somewhere there's got to be something that encompasses all of that. And I, I like to think that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, which, which in the Christian realm, too, when people claim marvelous healings, and, and there have been a very few instances to where you've seen a doctor come forward and say, here's the x-ray, this person had a tumor the size of a golf ball, here's an x-ray I took three days later, it's gone. The doctor, right. being honest about it, says, I can't explain it. I can't explain why it happened this way, but he knows it did happen. And that's being honest about it. My, I've seen from my, my aunt and uncle are both doctors here, and they said the same thing. I've asked Wayne, you know, why do some people get better? Is it a uh, state of mind? Is it, yeah. what their, is it their beliefs that are helping them or hurting them? And she says it goes both ways. Yeah. She's seen people with no faith get better. She's seen people pray and die. Yeah. She's seen people that don't think about it one way or the other, and they get better, and, you know, somebody else doesn't make it at all. And so it's... Even the doctors themselves have to admit that there's more going on here than, than they can put their finger on, too. Yeah, I think we're, as human beings, uh, beyond science, we're always searching for the scientists can tell us what happens based on scientific right. principles, but they can never tell the why behind it. You know, why? we're looking we're looking for the why, and we have to look beyond just science to be able to tell us the why. And I think we're doing that. I mean, everyone goes a little bit on, on their own intuition and what their own feelings are, even if it just pushes you to, into an area of study. You, know, mm -hmm. you wouldn't even be uh, drawn to that area of study were it not for, for something pulling you there. You know, yeah. Something. yeah, something like that. Well, anyway, I want to thank you for being on the show. And as usual, I always welcome comments, either pro or con, or if you have a, a statement that you want to put forth that's a different idea than we did, feel free in the comments to leave that um, down below. Any, and we will, I will certainly answer it. My channel is a completely free speech channel, and I have no problem with whatever belief system uh, people want to present, to, uh, or, or even make it as a video reply. That would be great, too. And, and I really thank you for being on the show, Chad. I hope you come back sometime, too. Anytime. It's great speaking with you, sir. You have yourself an excellent day. You, too. My best side, Got your best side, sweetheart. Smart ass. <laughs> oh, that ain't going in the video. Okay, everybody. Wacko out here in the garage. Just going to go ahead and do a quick uh, reveal on the mystery tool. It is a chain alignment tool. What you do is fix it to your sprocket with the adjustment screw and you use the pointer come back and sight down like a rifle barrel and make sure your chain and wheels are lined up after you adjust your chain because otherwise and I don't know if I'm going to get the camera to pick it up but there's reference marks on the swing arm and on the axle block here and you have to hop from one side of the bike to the other, back and forth, making sure they're aligned with each other. And years ago, they weren't really horribly accurate. So, uh, Motion Pro is who makes this. Came up with that little nifty tool to help make sure everything's lined up. So now we got the new chain installed and lined up. I'm going to let Chris finish doing the rest of this work, and I'm going back inside. Bravo Charlie 65925 here. Thought I'd join in on Suburban Rider Show Us Your Tool contest. Should be a simple one. I have a tool here that I use quite often.
So there you go. That's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.